evening, everybody. Um, I am Lynn Johnson. I'm the Executive Director of the Arts Alliance. I'm glad to have all of you here. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about this project and how it all got started um, and what I was hoping would happen. And um, it's a work in progress, as you can see, and it's a pilot program, and I'm hoping to do it again in the future. So. Um, let me tell you a little bit of the history. Uh, I used to work for the Huntington Theater Company and I worked for the education department and we used to run a national poetry competition, a recitation for high school students. And every year, uh, we would go down to uh, the cultural center of Cape Cod to have one of the competitions. And in, it's a beautiful old bank that is an art gallery. And during poetry month is when we would go, they would have these this, this art exhibit called Mutual Muses. And Mutual Muses was made up of poems and artwork. And, and there was jewelry and you know all different kinds of mediums of artwork. And I always thought it was an amazing exhibit. And I got to see it every year for about four years in a row. And I just found it very interesting. And I spoke to the uh, director down there. And she actually went to, uh, to speak to the Massachusetts Poetry Group about how this would work. And I, I always thought that it would be really wonderful to add another element to it. Um, I thought history in our area in particular is so rich and so wonderful. And what, you know, and we're all, you know, these organizations here, we're all struggling nonprofit organizations that want to be noticed. And I thought what a great thing to do is to, is to blend all of that beautiful history that we have with art and with, and with literature, which is something that the Arts Alliance has come in and out of over the years, but we've never, I don't think, done poetry. So um, and we have this opportunity to be in our town hall and have an exhibit. And we have all these beautiful organizations in the town surrounding us that have some gallery space here and there. And I thought, what a great idea to get us all together to learn about the towns that are around us and respond to them artistically and then to have a moving exhibit. So that's how it all started. Um, and at the end, when we first do our first exhibit, you know, I was just talking to Marjorie Goldstein, who's a composer and a, and a um, and a, a musician about adding some music to it, doing the poetry reading, talking about the process, and just all be part of some unique experience that maybe none of us have experienced before in this way. Has anybody in this room ever experienced anything like this in this way? Good. So that's good. So I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I didn't have anybody pay a registration fee to come. Very unusual for the Arts Alliance. Um, maybe I should have, and then more people would come. You know, it's, it's just something I just thought um, I wrote for grant. I wanted to be able to donate money to the organizations that worked so hard to keep our history alive in the area. Um, and but with that, I had no idea who was going to show up to me. So we have some artists, we have some poets. Um, I'm actually a poet too, so I'm going to do some writing. I have an artist in my in my um, and my staff, and right there in the back there is the staff of the Arts Alliance. That's Denise and Sarah in the middle, and Diane. Um, and they're all here supporting the Arts Alliance, and they're a great staff. So all the stuff that you see that comes from us, comes from them. Um, before I forget, though, because I don't want to forget this. This, <laughs> this is just right off the track. But this weekend, Symphony Pro Musica is doing a wonderful concert. Um, it's a musical matinee, and they're, they're playing the Cinderella Suite. So they're doing um, Poulenc, the story of Babar. I just happen to be narrating. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Sansin's introduction and Rondo Capriccio. I'm not really sure. Did I say that correctly? Yeah? <laughs> okay, but they're really spectacular routine type, or maybe she's 14, violin a soloist. <coughs> yes, she's amazing. I heard her the other night. And she yes. is unreal. Just unreal. It's like it was part of her body. Yeah. yeah. And she said she's a little I said she's 12. Do she, you think she's 12? I don't know. I don't know. She might even be 17, but she's a kid, you know? Yeah. Cute. Smart. Um, can you shut your cell phones off while I'm thinking of all those people that have cell phones? <laughs> I just remembered that on my notes here. Um, this year, the Arts Alliance had a theme for the first time, a theme for the overall season is Ghost Spirits and Past Lives, and this is part of that theme, I'm going to go a little bit history. Um, here's how it's going to work. So uh, I, I passed out a sheet, a um, gray sheet, and it tells you a little bit about it, why we chose the, the title Synergia. I wanted to call it Synergia, but it's like synergy, so I had to go the other way. It doesn't fall as well off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> 
So we have um, four um, different um, historical organizations tonight. Well, we have the Hudson Historical Society. We have um, Ellen Bush and Barbara Nelly. Did I say that correctly? They were here. And they're going to talk about historical Hudson. Thank you. Um, we have Mary Como, uh, Como um, and Alice Kogeshaw from the Bolton Historical Society. And they're going to talk um, about the Bolton historical, uh, about Bolton. And then we have Diane Newton from Harvard. Um, and also we have one of our artists who brought, he's from Shrewsbury, and he brought a piece of art that he's done, um, and he's gonna talk about a piece of history that has to do with Shrewsbury. And he's also an artist, so he's gonna be doing some work here. Um, and I started this process in May. I went and visited you guys in the summer, I think. I, was, I went to you first in May to see if you thought it sounded interesting. I visited the Harvard Museum, um, and I visited the Clinton Museum. They couldn't make it tonight. Um, Sudbury was going to come, but something happened, somebody was ill. So uh, it was very interesting to go around and speak and, and learn about the history of um, your, your wonderful museum there. It's just amazing. Your museum is incredible. The Hudson Historical Society in their new space had so many, so many wonderful things to look at. So I encourage you to look and go around to this area because we are one big family. Um, so what's going to happen tonight, they're going to get up individually and they're going to talk for 10 to 15 minutes. I know we started a little late uh, and give just a short little little talk about why this artifact or this building or whatever they brought tonight is important to them. And then um, artists and poets take some notes, take a picture if you need to. Uh, and you're going to have a month to respond. That's a long time for some and a short time for others. But you'll have a month to respond to whatever it is you'd like to. You can pick two pieces. Um, I would prefer it if you did. If you have time to do so, that would be great. Um, you know, whatever inspires you, in whatever way you, it inspires you, whatever it means to you. It, you know, you, it's your choice. It's your creative choice. And then you're going to submit your work to us, and the rules are here, and how you're going to do it. Um, then we're going to come back together on February 28th. I hope you're all going to be around and meet again, and the work that's submitted will be shifted. There'll be two tables with envelopes on them, and the poets will get the artwork, artwork uh, the, the artists will get some poetry, and they'll respond again in a second way. So now you'll have two pieces that will go into this exhibit, or more if you choose to do more. Um, I would love to get all towns represented that are here tonight, because that's one of the goals. Um, and then we will have a final third phase where we will get together, show the work, um, talk about it, talk about the process, just kind of, you know, see how it worked out, how it felt, just, just chat about it, you know, kind of informally, um, and sort of have a dress rehearsal for the reception that will be the first exhibit, which will be downstairs in our town hall at Hudson. And I have, um, I guess Bolton Library now has a new um, gallery space, and I've applied for that, so I'd like to move the exhibit to, to Bolton at some point, and I need to find out where we can do it in Harvard and where we can do it um, in uh, well, Shrewsbury, if that's a possibility. Yes? I'll look at the gallery and tap the bookseller in Westboro. It's available for this sort of Oh, really? Get yourself a swap. Okay. Tap it? Tap it. All right, are there any questions before we start? Okay, so, um, Ellen, you are up. Ellen is from the Hudson Historical Society. I have no idea what she has, but I have a feeling I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Okay. Well, this is a replica of the Ashley, who actually, excuse me, Apsley who from the Apsley Rubber Factory. The Apsley Firestone Factory in Hudson was very important to the town. In fact, at one time, about half the people in town who were working were working at the Apsley Rubber Room. So this group was presented to the Honorable L.D. Apsley by his grateful employees at a special testimonial to him um, held at the town hall here 
in 1900. In fact, it was a Wednesday night, October 31st, which seems like a funny time to have a ball with dancing and so forth in the middle of the week. But anyway, that is the night they chose, and this was what was presented to him. So what we need to know is something about the Capsule Factory. This is the program that went with the testimonial to give him this food. And there were so many dances, apparently that's what the pencil was for. And you can see the replica of rubber footwear. It was kind of a clever idea. <laughs> and this, this is called a washstand boot, which apparently at the time was quite famous and sold very well. This is a program from uh, the 50th anniversary of the town of Hudson. The town of Hudson was incorporated in 1866, and this was 1916. And it certainly was pro promoting American industry. It says, welcome. Come in and inspect our exhibit of merchandise manufactured in the Ashley Rubber Company, Hudson Mass. Operators of the largest factory in the United States manufacturing rubber boots and shoes and rubber clothing. Boots and body products made in the USA, made in New England, made in Massachusetts, and in big letters, made in Hudson. <laughs> so certainly a good promotion for it. So this is some information about the factory and LD Apsley. Louis Dubois Apsley was born September 29th, 1852 in Pennsylvania. And he moved to Philadelphia as a young man because even then he knew he wanted to be a salesman. In 1876, he became assistant superintendent in the department of boots and shoes and rubber goods at the famous store of John Wanamaker in Philadelphia. Eventually, he moved to the Gossamer Rubber Company of Boston with headquarters in Chicago, where he made many business trips to the middle country, middle part of our country, and the western states. He then came to uh, Boston, where he met with J.H. Coffin, and the two of them went into a partnership and came to Hudson on Absalom's birthday, September 29, 1885. He was 33 years old. They bought an abandoned factory near the dam on Washington Street. In fact, I think it was on the other side of the street from the dam. And began the manufacture of rubber clothing. The business was known as the Goodyear Gossamer Company. At the end of three years, this company was doing the largest business in the manufacture of Gossamer garments in the United States. And Gossamer was the early name for what we call rainbows. At this time, the plant burned. And in 1888, Epstein and his partner bought 16 acres of land between Cottage and Central Streets and built a new factory. By 1892, Epsley bought out his partner and formed the Epsley Rubber Company. The company enlarged as the production went from production of raincoats to boots and rubber shoes. The new plant began the manufacture of Macintoshes, or double textured garments made from high class fabrics, almost exclusively made in England. Epsley's factory improved the method of manufacturing them giving them superior wearing and waterproof qualities. The business continued to grow. The rubber boot and shoe factory began with a capacity of 5,000 pairs of shoes a day and eventually reached a capacity of up to 20,000 20, pairs. Additions were built on the plant in 1900, 1903, 1906, and 1950. In 1906, the annual production of the rubber boot and shoe department and the manufacture of rubber clothing was considerably more than $3 million. So for 1906, the Firestone Absent Company was formed in 1920 when the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company of Ohio was seeking a footwear. During World War I, the factory employed more than 1,300 men and women making rubber shoes and garments. The Army requested rubber blankets for the soldiers to use in France. That's sort of surprising. It wasn't delivered with a rubber blanket, but a 
apparently it would be like a top hall or something that they could put their, their bedding on. So that was pretty successful. So Absley said that he would turn the manufacturing capacity off his factory over to the government and produce whatever goods the army needed. The two basic principles of Absley's success were to build a superior product and be honest in your business dealings. And the quote was the production of goods of high quality and honorable dealings in business relations. He was very thoughtful to his employees. <clears throat> On Labor Day in 1903, to celebrate the completion of a six-story addition to the factory, he held a huge field day that went a good bit of the day. And then the employees returned to the factory for a banquet, dancing, and card game. Games. And he did the same thing in 1915 for another addition to the factory. He made several trips to Europe, but even while he was there, he was thinking of his employees, and he would bring back souvenirs for them from his trips. Uh, on one occasion, he brought back lace handkerchiefs for the women employees from uh, Brussels, and he brought pocket knives for the men. And another occasion, he gave all the employees the, the writing set pocketbooks, but probably wallets, that had a new silver dollar in them. And then after a trip to the Holy Land in 1922, he gave all of his employees a savings account with $5 from the Hudson Savings Bank. So you have to say that he was generous and the employees really appreciated it. So that's why they decided to show their appreciation to him by this testimonial that they had, giving him this uh, silver boot.